Hello dear ones, it's Alice. My topic today is um, spiritual ego. And um, the pros and cons of spiritual ego. And I don't have one clue what's about to happen on this video, so, or if anything, so we will see, okay? I've heard it said that spiritual ego is a kind of a glass ceiling that we run into as we pursue the path of uh, evolution on the human scale. And it stands between our human selves and our, our life and understanding and awareness as a spiritual adept. So it's, it seems we reach a certain point in our studies and, and practice of the presence of God. And, and at that point, where we, we, from the egoic point of view, we might consider ourselves to be head and shoulders over the crowd of humankind, right? Because we have studied a lot, right? And, and we know quite a few answers about God and about reality and all that stuff. So, so, so first let's go back to the notion of ego. Because, you know, we're dealing this year with the third chakra negative, okay? Now, we've talked quite a bit about the aspects of third chakra negative known as power over others and powerlessness. Sometimes termed um, the, the, the controllers and the enslaved, right? Which is rather more dramatic. <laughs> so that's one, one aspect of the third chakra that's changing, bec not because uh, it's not really the chakra that's cha changing, but the energy that's, that's the awareness of the energy is changing so that it's becoming more conscious. And, and we're having a chance to understand the, the, the truth of the third chakra and, uh, and the wonders of it. Okay? So, um,. Another aspect of the third chakra, as I've, I've read, as I understand it, is ego, right? And uh, so, um, ego is a very necessary, like, mental filter through which we're able to function as human beings in human bodies on Earth, in the third dimension. So, um, actually, there's... Um, at least from my encounters with fifth uh, dimensional Hathors, I'd say there's also uh, uh, ego in the fifth dimension, but but nothing like ego here in the third dimension. Um, it's like um, um, an, an understanding that individuality exists and that there are slight differences in like the the fabric of the mental, emotional, spiritual makeup of individuals, but, but, but not a strong sense of separation anymore. In fact, it's the exact opposite. There's a sense in the fifth dimension and on up of, of, of unity, of oneness, and an appreciation of small differences uh, of personality expressed as ego. But here in the third dimension, um, there's a real problem with separation and the notion of separation. And it is that notion of separation which created the illusion of the third dimension in the, the physical world in the, in, the, in the beginning. Because it seems very clear through the construct of the senses of mankind that, that there is such a thing as a thing as me, and there is such a thing, uh, unflowing, unchanging, and opposing thing as other, you know. Whereas in an energetic, a more energetic 
a more refined energetic state, it's much easier to imagine flowing through and into and becoming different and joining uh, at a molecular level, at um, a quark level, uniting with the energy of another uh, individual and then withdrawing from that energy just as easily. You know, so th the flow of, of the fifth dimension makes it, makes it, makes an egoic stance, um, uh, <laughs> the flow of the fifth dimension, uh, makes a flow out of ego as well. You know, but here on Earth, it's as if our ego were something that physically protects us from from like joining with the energy of you know the the Earth and the sky and other humans and animals and the trees. You know, my ego makes me a thing. Yeah, so. So what about spiritual ego? Uh, my spiritual ego makes me, you know, hierarchically speaking, a pretty important thing. And that's kind of a hard thing to let go of after a lot of work. That's what I think. And it also, it has great value here on Earth right now. I mean, a lot of people are wondering what's coming up next and, um, you know, leadership is is needed, or considered to be needed. Uh, then there are people that that look to um, look to a person with spiritual ego as providing like an umbrella of of protection. So there's a spiritual ego like that, and underneath it are the people, the people that feel that they are actually part of and connected to the spiritual ego of, of a group leader. Uh, and this holds for uh, like huge religions such as the Catholic Church with, with the Pope in charge, you know, and the council around him, um, and the bishops on a more local level. And it also holds for smaller groups as well. So the perceived value of, of spiritual ego, one of them is status and prestige and and those are um, those are personal uh, values or perks of spiritual ego and uh, a, a more compassionate value of spiritual ego is the chance to to protect other people and to guide them and like that um, so those are pros and then on the con side, in other words, the, the part of spiritual ego that's, that's troublesome these days, the leader, imagine he's the very top of this, like, you know, kind of, um, there's like um, an umbrella, and at the top of the umbrella, right at the top, there's the leader sitting, see like my knuckle up there. <laughs> and he, through his mental, emotional, spiritual process, is connected to all the other, like, imagine the fingertips are the, are, the, are the people in the group, a group of five people and a leader, right? And so in his mind is always the mental construct of, of an umbrella and that he is the top of the umbrella and he is sending out, like, um, protection uh, energy and, uh, like, enlightenment energy and... Uh, and uh, spiritual energy to everybody in the group. So in a sense, the uh, under the auspices of spiritual ego, the leader is the group, okay? And and what does the group do when this happens? The group cedes power to the leader. He has power over, they are powerless, relatively powerless, okay? Now, so, so there's trouble in the hood. From the, in this regard, and the trouble is that the people have a notion that they have no power, and the leader has a notion that he is everyone in the group. Isn't that something? Isn't that an amazing construct? Isn't that an amazing mental filter? 
Now I'm going to tell you a story about last night. <laughs> the most amazing things have been happening to me in the middle of the night. I'll wake up from a deep sleep suddenly, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., sometime around that time, and something most amazing is happening. So I sit up, I get up, and I go meditate for a while, and even more amazing things unfold. Uh, so last night I woke up, I sat up and I went to meditate um, because a most peculiar thing was happening. And I just had to check on my cat. She's been making the most peculiar sounds lately. And so this was the most peculiar yet. It's almost like she's singing the song of the wild. <laughs> Sometimes when she drinks water, from her water pitcher, and first she makes this 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 call several times, and I, and I wonder if I have a I really have a, a black American short hair cat, or maybe I have a tiny wild panther, you know, in my house. <laughs> so anyway, she just made a series of calls just now, and I checked to make sure she was she was okay, and there she was sitting very placidly on the rug. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> these are these are interesting times. <laughs> so there have been so many interruptions today when I tried to get to this segment. First, my camera battery ran out when I was out in the middle of the wilderness, and, and now my cat just just offered me another interruption. So each time I'm guessing I, I, I wasn't quite ready to convey this message until now. So let me see. Um, so, to get back to, to what happened this morning, uh, early, early in the morning, way before dawn, uh, I could feel the diaphragm, the front funnel of my heart chakra, contracting and expanding, and through it was coming a sound, a human voice sound. And the first thing that it, one of the first things that it did was to, to voice an upset or complaint or like a reprimand against somebody that I knew who had certain uh, like personality characteristics, behavior characteristics that had been like setting, setting my nerves on edge from time to time very rarely but once in a while and these and you know I'm of a generation that doesn't like to talk about those kinds of upsets so what I heard was something like a masculine voice uh, offering a stern reprimand uh, that was truthful but stern to someone that I hadn't uh, I hadn't cared to offer a reprimand to it and and that that in itself was was and the result was that the person felt chided and uh, like taken aback and uh, kind of upset that person that other telepathic uh, participant and and the result was that I felt that the communication it felt to me like that communication wasn't really coming from my personality in fact it felt like it was coming from somebody else's spiritual ego they, they having come while I was asleep into my electromagnetic field and actually um, merged with it somehow and then produced these, these statements and these sounds. Okay. I don't really know whether that's true or with that has, whether that may have had to do with my upset in the moment at hearing a different kind of voice coming from my heart. You know, because it is possible that I accessed a deeper level of heart awareness, and so then I was ready to say something that before I wasn't ready to say, something perhaps more truthful. And also, the possibility exists that this thing, this event, could be viewed on two separate uh, levels of reality in two different dimensions. One being the truth that I just spoke of, and the other being the truth of someone else who has a spiritual ego and who wishes to control, you know. So, so 
so there you have an, if it, just take it from the standpoint of like the third chakra negative were it so what you would have is the attempt of somebody who has not yet succeeded in, in breaking through this glass ceiling of the third chakra uh, which sometimes can be broken through by relaxing the diaphragm the, dia the muscles of, around the diaphragm which are just at the bottom of the, of the lungs beneath the lungs just at the bottom of the rib cage there are muscles that, that go through the whole body that can be relaxed and when they are relaxed then the um, pranic energy can pierce through the, um, the resistance there. The resistance has to do with breathing and staying alive, you know, so it can feel pretty insistent. Think of that as a glass ceiling, okay? And then the energy of the pranic column rises from the third chakra to the fourth chakra, where it can blend with the downpouring and incoming light. Now, so there's that. And so then the business about spiritual ego, okay? So that goes to show how a person who is uh, active, actively seeking to escape from spiritual ego can venture into territory that might appear to another person to be uh, an invasion of privacy, an invasion of the aura, and so forth without actually intending harm, but instead in, intending what you might call to do something for someone else's own good. The problem here is that in the now, in the fifth dimension, we must make very certain always to, to ask first and to make sure that the free will of another person agrees completely with any help that we might like to give. So it's not a question of owning the people under your umbrella. It's a question of asking at this moment and every moment in the now, is my help um, needed and is my help desired? Okay, we all want to help but we must respect free will, or nothing good will come of our desire to help other people. And so at the same time, on another level, from the level of the heart chakra, even if there may be perceived interference uh, on that level, from someone with third chakra negative, uh, from my own point of view, I can see and I can understand the hand of God in what is happening because it is God who makes changes in my heart. It is God who directs the show and God who loves me and has only my very highest in mind. My soul day to day I aligned with the intentions of my Creator and so I hope to act in the world today in synchrony with the will of God that's my hope that's why I don't pay too much attention to what people tell me I always look to God you know because I figure Things are changing so fast, and only God knows for sure. And He delegates to my 5D, 6D team all the time, you know. They have an idea what's going on. The truth of the matter is, I don't have one idea. <laughs> so, anyway, but I trust that it'll be okay, and I'm certain that it will be okay for each of us. Very certain. We will all be okay. So...